Um, number three, collective decision making informs the outcomes, right? Collective decision making is going to inform the outcomes. And I, I talked um, in pretty introductory but pretty you know, succinct detail in the previous, in the last half of this discourse, this discussion, this lecture on uh, participatory action research, right? It's um, this collective process of decision making, right? It's not just my decision as a researcher that's going to frame the outcomes for a community. It doesn't make any sense, right? I'm not going to come in and say, I know what's wrong with your community. Let me tell you, right? As a matter of fact, um, Gichu Spivak has an amazing account. This doesn't really have to do with participatory action research, but it it's a good sort of side note. It's a clear visual. And I'm going to give you the super truncated version. So um, Spivak writes seminal text, a seminal article called Can the Subaltern Speak? I'm not going to give you the answer to that, whether they can or can't. And basically, um, because of white man's burden, almost everything that we're talking about now, uh, Europeans go into India, and in, in India they have the practice of sati, S-A-T-I, and it's widow sacrifice. The widow throws herself on the funeral pyre of her husband. If she throws herself, uh, the, the, the husband dies, she's obviously alive, she throws herself on the funeral pyre. If she throws herself on the funeral pyre, she shows her devotion and also her fidelity to her hus husband. She was a very good wife, she was a loving, and she was faithful to her husband all the days of her life, and she's exemplified this by sacrificing herself. If she refuses to throw herself on the funeral pyre of her husband, then she's castigated. She's, uh, it serves as a representation of her infidelity and so on and so on. And you can imagine all of the feminist critique that go uh, and underpin all of this sort of narrative. In addition to that, however, what ends up happening is that colonialists come in and they say, Oh my goodness, look at all you brown people. You guys are savages. You guys are heathen. We're going to outlaw this practice. This practice is no longer appropriate right? in a civilized world. This is savagery. So they outlaw the practice, and everybody's like, yay, you know, the Europeans came and, you know, civilized the savages. We've heard that a million times. Savages always need civilization, right? So the, 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 the savages are civilized, and, you know, it's neither here nor there. It's me back at it's a very, very interesting question. Did anybody ask the women? It's a very good question, right? Did anybody ask the women? In participatory action research, it's sort of the same, right? Did anybody ask the participants? Right? That's the same sort of framework. Don't go in the, into a community thinking that you know what's best for the community and you're going to tell them how to solve their problems, right? That's elitist. It's, it's disgusting, right? It's, it's, you know, first world, third world. I'm better. You're, you know, it's, you don't want to do that, right? Don't go into the community thinking that you have a total understanding of the complexity of their problems. Because though you could be right, though um, what you think is framing the problem that they're facing is a part of the problem, and it might be, it's probably not going to be a sufficient condition. It might be necessary, but not, not sufficient. It might be one of 15 different problems. Immersing yourself, technically involving yourself in the research with the participants is the best way that you're going to, one, arrive at an understanding of a problem, and also, two, at the solutions. So when we're talking about, three, this, this process of addressing the solutions require that the decision-making is a collective process. Right? You can't get to a solution of what is the best outcome Spivak would say, without involving the women. In a participatory action framework, you can't get to the solution of what the best outcome will be unless you involve everybody, right? The participants, and the participant researcher and the researcher participant all need to be involved in this collective decision making in order for us to have a viable potential, because it might not even be viable, but a vi viable potential for our outcome, right? So this is collective... You have to have collective decisions. Number four, outcomes are collectively assessed and analyzed by both the participants and the researchers. So not only do you have to have collect collective decision making, but you have to have a collective assessment of the outcomes. Was this outcome, where, where it's obviously not, not clear, I mean, if it's obviously, if the whole point of a participatory action research, for example, and I just had a student who did this, um, is to, to throw a play, a performance, which addresses some, something, and this was part of the research, then insofar as you throw the play, you're successful, right? There's no ambiguity in the outcome. The outcome is successful because what we decided as a group was that we wanted to have a play, and we did that. Therefore, it was successful. If your outcome's a little bit more vague, um, to decrease mortality rates, to increase infant survival rates, to increase uh, literacy in the region, something that's a little bit harder to assess, then insofar as you're conducting um, uh, uh, participatory action research, 
the assessment of that outcome to determine whether or not the outcome that you initially projected was effective or not, and effective isn't mutually exclusive, it's more effective or less effective really, is a better way of putting it, um, it requires a collective assessment. So I've created a, a diagram which I'll reproduce here because you're not going to be able to see it. Um, you have the researcher participant, and I'll just r slash play. The researcher participant, right, we dissolved just researcher or just participant, so we, we, as a group, have decided to make decisions, right? So we enter into collective Right? So we enter into a collective decision-making process. The researcher participant, the participant researcher, we all agree to enter into a collective decision-making process. We enter into this process, we identify, and there's many steps in there, we identify, and actually I should uh, draw this out, um, this collective, and this is just some, I mean it's not, as I said, this is an introduction, so I, I can't get into too much detail, but in this collective um, decision-making process, we have to and I talked about this briefly in the other video, we have to identify, identify the problems. Right? What's the problem? What's the issue? What's at stake? We have to identify the problem. We have to identify a means of addressing the problem. So we have to identify the problem, we have to identify a means of addressing the problem. In this, there's sub-steps. I'm not going to get into all of them now. Some of the sub-steps, you know, people should be uh, volunteer or elected um, for different uh, positions, functions. You are a, a really good speaker, so you're going to do this. You're really, really handy, so you're going to do that. You have political connects, so you're going to do that, and so on, right? So there's a lot of different means. It's a very loaded term, right? Uh, identify a means of addressing the problem. I've identified the problem. I've identified a means of addressing the problem, I'm going to execute right, you're going to execute the means of identifying, addressing the problem, we're going to try to address the problem, and then we're going to make, um, and this is going to be an outcome, right, this is going to be an outcome, uh, technically potential outcomes, and then we're going to make an assessment of our outcomes, were we effective or not? And then I'm going to see whether or not what we said we wanted to do, we did, and whether it was effective or not. We might do what we want to do, but we recognize that insofar as we did what we wanted to do, it wasn't effective in addressing the problem. We thought it would, but it didn't address the problem. We did, we were successful in arriving at the outcome, but the outcome never really has, um, uh, addressed the problem. So you go back to the drawing board, right? That sort of technical, that technical term for going back to the drawing board, as we now know, it's um, collective reflection, right? So you go back into a process of collective reflection, into a process of critical dialogue to reassess the problem and, and you know, post another, post another um, uh, solution. So, um, researcher participant enters into a collective decision-making process. Um, we are going to, we're going to posit outcomes, P-O-S-I-T. We're going to sort of create outcomes. We're going to state what our outcomes should be. After we have our outcomes, we're going to collectively assess. The collective assessment. We're going to collectively assess these outcomes. Hey, we said we wanted to do X, and if we did X, X would help to solve your problem that we addressed, right? The problem that we had addressed. We, we did X, X addressed the problem, so collectively we recognized that this outcome was great. We said we're going to do X and X would address the problem. We did X, but X did not address the problem. So, guess what? Something went wrong. What went wrong? Go back into collective uh, reflection. And then, we recognize that this act of collective assessment is conditioned on the participation of the research researcher slash participant and the participant slash researcher. And the cycle sort of continues indefinitely until you arrive at a point where um, you have solution. And it doesn't mean that all of your participatory action research is going to result in solution. It should result in solution, but there's going to be some times where the problem is just too big to address. But at least you'll have, at the very least, 
your research will have, and your research and the researcher and the participants will all have a better understanding of the problem, if nothing else, right? If your research, quote unquote, fails, it's not that you know you failed or you know you're not going to be able to defend your research or your dissertation or whatever it is that you're trying to do. It's like, hey, I really thought I could address this problem, but upon further analysis, I recognize um, you know three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten different latent problems which which um, readers need you know interested researchers uh, interested in this project um, need to need to recognize right there might be there might be any number of uh, latent sort of um, problems probably resulting in structural violence which I'm not going to get into um, that that make research and successful research in this field or in this study or in this community very very difficult right I know that might seem really really technical but there's Structural violence basically is hidden violence. It's not apparent violence. I'm not going to get into it now. But typically when it's the case that you do participatory action research and you consistently fail to arrive at um, some type of success in the research, depending on how you define success in the research, it's more than likely because of a very sort of reinforced structural violence within the community. That's a technical response. I can't explain what that means if you don't know. I apologize. But basically there's stuff going on in the background that you just don't know is what that means, right? So, um, and th those type of things, it's not a failure if your research comes to that conclusion because then you recognize and you sort of unmask how um, insidious the problem really is. We thought the problem was bad, but you don't know how bad it is because after X amount of time in the community doing X amount of that with X amount of money, we've uncovered all of this, right? And then, you know, the, now other researchers come in from different angles because of the researches you did. So there really isn't every there really isn't ever any failed research. You know, if you put your heart into it, your time into it, and you're very very rigorous in what you do, um, your your research is going to be successful. I, I mean, I believe that. 